Hello my friends. So today I'm going to be showing to you Simon de Montfort, who was the 6th Earl of Leicester, lived from 1208 to 1265 AD, and he faced a lot of the same problems that we are facing today in the West, and he was facing these problems like 800 years ago. It's kind of crazy how these same interests keep doing the same things to uh, Western nations, to European nations. It's always the same story. They've been doing this for hundreds of years to us. So what did he, he was up against Henry III of England. This, this guy was a corrupt asshole who was using the English people for his own personal gain, for his own prominence. He, all he did was <clears throat> build up his own castles and his own palaces. He invested heavily in his own shit. Uh, he held these lavish religious ceremonies, cost tons of money, apparently gave to charities, but uh, who knows? I mean, the Clintons gave to charities too. The Clintons have a charity foundation. These elite assholes have always been cloaking their activities under the guise of charities and uh, of course he ex the way that Wikipedia puts it is he extracted huge money amounts of money from the Jews in England but in reality he was just borrowing from the Jews he was borrowing exorbitant amounts that he couldn't pay back and so he had to go to war to gain more territory to be able to pay his debts and this is what he was doing. He was supporting these foreign wars on behalf of the Holy Roman Emperor and on behalf of the Pope. Uh, he tried to reclaim, reclaim land in France. He tried to put his own son on the throne of Sicily. This is an English guy. What the fuck is he doing down in the Mediterranean? He should be worried about his own people especially when his people are starving, which ended up happening. So Henry III is spending all, all the uh, English people's money. He's taxing the barons heavily to pay for his own bullshit, his own taxes and palaces, his own foreign invasions. He wanted to go on another crusade to Jewish lands down in uh, the Middle East. But luckily, he was prevented by rebellions, and Simon de Montfort was the lead rebel. This guy was a badass. Look at him. This guy's a badass. So, first of all, everybody knew what was going on with the Jews back in the day. So, he's sick of their usury. He's sick of them loaning money to the barons and getting them in trouble with the uh, am amounts of debt that they're going to be putting themselves in. He's sick of people getting trapped by the usurers with their typical tricks. And so he banned the Jews from his territory. He said, in my time, he says, he banishes them in my time or in the time of any of my heirs to the end of the world. And he says, uh, it says somewhere why he did so. He justified his actions as being for the good of my soul and for the souls of my ancestors and successors. And even his parents, they knew what was up. He banned usury in many of his new domains, which made him very popular with uh, the common people. Because they were sick of these rich people getting themselves into trouble by taking out these massive loans and then having to tax them, tax the local barons and the local landowners a lot more to pay off their fucking debts. So, this guy, Simon de Montfort, organized a alliance against King Henry III. Oh, and by the way, too, not only did he do that, not only does he kick out the Jews, not only does he ban usury, not only is he for the common folk, but it, he bangs the king's sister. He ends up getting with the king's sister. 
uh, against the will of the king. Where is it? Let's see if I can find it for you. Right here. On August 9th, 1239, Henry is reported, King Henry, is reported to have confronted Montfort, calling him an excommunicant and threatened to imprison him in the Tower of London. You seduced my sister, King Henry said, and when I discovered this, I gave her to you, against my will, to avoid scandal. Simon and Eleanor, Henry's sister, fled to France to escape Henry's wrath. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. What, <laughs> what a king. Fucking King Henry. What a guy. He sounds real powerful in his personal life. So, you have King Henry here. And not only was King Henry spending all the local money, like, fucking fleecing the locals for his own bullshit, he's getting advised by these foreigners uh, the Pointu Lugasians, who were his mother's, uh, his step-siblings, basically. His mother remarried after King John died, and had more kids with a foreigner. So he was trying to take them on crusades, he was trying to expand the lands into foreign... He didn't care at, at all about the English people. It's, doubt, it's doubtful that he was in, even English. I don't think he was even English. Uh, or at least his ancestors came from foreign lands, and they saw this as a, a money-making exercise, I would imagine. So, yeah, Simon de Montfort started the Barons' War. Everyone was unhappy with the way that Henry was bankrupting the government with his own personal expenditures and his own foreign interests, borrowing lots of money from Jews, and then making the barons pay him back, and the average landowners. But, so Simon de Montfort, in this, wanted to reassert the Magna Carta to force the king to surrender more powers to the baronial council. And at least the barons were locals. The barons were local landowners who had roots there. So this would have been a lot better than some foreign... I mean, King Henry came from foreign lines. You can look this up. And even if he didn't come from foreign lines, he's working for foreign interests. He's in the pocket of the Pope. He's in the pocket of the Jews. He's working for the Holy Roman Emperor. This kind of shit has been going on forever. Well, not forever, but at least since the fall of Rome. And, uh... Yeah. So he bangs the king's sister, takes on the corrupt crown, ousts the Jews, and fights for the common person. He was the first person to try to get... Where is it? Yeah, local administration. It's just that he had a, a parliament with common folk involved. So, but this is how, like, the Magna Carta came to be. The, the Magna Carta came to be as a concession against rebellious barons who were rebelling against a corrupt central crown. And it was almost a symbolic thing. I mean, the king went right back to doing the same shit after the Magna Carta was instated. It, it was really meaningless. The English look at the Magna Carta with such pride, but really, what did it get them? They still had the same corrupt crowns who are working for foreign interests. Uh, it's really kind of sad when you think about it. it. took such a long time for us to get to where we are today, but once upon a time people did try to rebel against these kinds of things. And... Uh, Trying to find, there's a section where it talks about how the the people of London welcomed Simon de Montfort. Montfort's parliament. So 
So the Burgesses, that's what I meant, from major towns, were invited, and the Knights of the Shire, of the Shires. Frodo and Sam were invited. <clears throat> so, this guy was a true fucking Englishman, and he was from France. He was more of a true Englishman than Henry, and he was from France. Fucking Simon de Montfort, what a badass. But the average person was behind him because, and this, it talks about this in Henry's page. King Henry, during this whole situation, this whole rebellion, had to make concessions like uh, the statute of Jewry. And the historians will look at this like, oy vey, the, fucking, the Jews were uh, scapegoated again, oy vey. But all this did was separate them from, it was in response to anti-Semitic feelings. Feelings, that's all they are, they just feel, they just want to scapegoat. In medieval England, it attempted to segregate the Jews by imposing the wearing of a Jewish badge, which never really happened. I mean, there are so many crypto-Jews anyway. So, this was just sort of a step. And when you look this up, this wasn't a real, like, statute. I think this was written in some back notes that they found somewhere. Uh, I think it was really just an attempt to get the Jews out of harm's way, because there were these mobs of people that were uh, attacking Jewish settlements in England. Mobs of common people going in and attacking them. Um, for instance, cause right before all this happened, little St. Hugh of Lincoln and of course, Wikipedia says falsely attributed. But how do how the fuck do they know it's falsely attributed? All of the reports of the time. Um, all the reports of the time say that the Jews actually did it. 1255, the Barons' War broke out in 1264. So this is also part of the backdrop. The chronicler Matthew Paris. This year, 1255, about the feast of the apostles Peter and Paul, July 27th, the Jews of Lincoln stole a boy called Hugh, who was about eight years old. After shutting him up in a secret chamber where they fed him on milk and other childish food, they sent to almost all the cities of England in which there were Jews and summoned some of their sect from each city to be present at a sacrifice to take place at Lincoln in contumely and insult of Jesus Christ. So it talks about a lot of fucked up shit. Uh, but they basically killed him and threw him in a well. And people found him. And uh, this was, what, like a decade before the Barons' War broke out? So not only did the people realize that these Jews had like a special privileged position in the king's court and that the king was borrowing lots of money from them and that usury was legal for them, but uh, not for uh, the average person, because <sighs> they did have special legal status in England. And all this shit is happening. So, and I just love how they, it's like, it's all falsely attributed, and gosh, it just, it's amazing that these blood libel uh, accusations happened all over Europe in different places but they were all just bullshit never happened so there's the Jew daughter the Jewess leading Hugh into her garden so Montfort banishes them he goes up against the king He's ready to fucking kill the king. He's ready to give the commoners some legitimate authority in their own country. Instead of having them get fleeced for foreign interests and for elite interests. And, uh... 
Did I say he banged the king's sister? He's such a badass. Uh, uh, it's so funny. And the one last thing that I wanted to talk about was... See, and you could tell he was a good rebel because it dragged on even after he died. And they say, it dragged on. Oh, God, these fucking rebels just need to stop. Where? But it talks about how during the final battle when Montfort was killed, they killed almost all the rebels because they were just that pissed. They're like, never again can this happen. It was a holocaust. So we gotta kill all these rebels. Damn, and there was a great thunderstorm going on on, the net, on that day. If only Montfort won. Can you imagine the world if Montfort won? Or at least imagine England if Montfort won. Okay, I found this post on Reddit. I couldn't find the quote in Wikipedia, but it says, De Montfort and his supporters were on the defensive, and though he held the king in his control, he found himself running from castle to castle in Wales. The Earl's son was attacked and defeated in a surprise attack at dawn on the 1st of August, but his father had no notion of whether his heir had managed to escape with any part of his army. On August 3rd at Evesham, the De Montfort was informed that his son's banners were approaching. Too late, it was realized that the approaching army was Edward's, toting the captured heraldry of his son's men and wearing red instead of white crosses upon their uniforms. Escape was impossible. To De Montfort's back was the Severn River, and the only bridge, and <clears throat> the only bridge blocked by an enemy detachment. The rebels were outnumbered three to one. One of De Montfort's sons was slaughtered in the fighting, and other captured. The king, as I've said, was nearly killed in the confusion of the down of the downpour and melee. Oh yeah, there was a there was a thunderstorm going on at the time. Uh, a twelve man hit squad roamed the battlefield. Its sole purpose was to find and cut down the Earl of Leicester. Roger Mortimer eventually drove a lance through De Montfort's neck. After the death. The head of the Earl of Lycaster was severed from his body. His testicles got off and hung on either side of his nose, and in such guise the head was sent as a trophy to the wife of Sir Roger Mortimer at Wigmore Castle. His hands and feet were also cut off and sent to diverse places to his uh, enemies of his, as a great mark of dishonor to the deceased, the trunk of his body, and that only was given for burial in the church of Evesham. So fucked up. You know that this pissed them off, this fucking 12-man hit squad that they're sending in. He must have really done something to upset the elites, the powers that be. And I bet it was like a foreign fucking mercenary squad, too, or something. <sighs> Alright, well, that's the story of Simon de Montfort. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.